Welcome everybody to the McCown Society Power Hour. I'm very excited. We have a wonderful uh, speaker that's near and dear to St. John's University. Uh, he was on the faculty at St. John's and we, we miss him dearly. But as I was saying to Dr. Chipola, this is Dr. Gaetano Chipola who will be speaking uh, today. Uh, it seems like he's not retired. It seems like he's a very busy, busy bee. And, um, uh, many people that I know will be traveling with you, Dr. Chipola, in September for your wonderful trip, which I will eventually go on, uh, maybe next year. That's why I'm putting it on my travel plans. But let me just tell you a little bit about, um, we could probably take the full hour to uh, share all the accomplishments by this wonderful professor of ours. Um, Dr. Gaetano Chipola was born in, and I'm sorry if I'm going to just destroy the pronunciation, even though I'm Italian. It's the Francavilla. Franca <laughs> what is it, Francavilla? Francavilla. Francavilla di Sicilia. Yes. Did I say that right? <laughs> <laughs> and immigrated to the United States in 1955. So you've been with, with us in the United States for, for many years. And he earned his BS from NYU School of Education and a master's degree from Hunter College and a PhD in Italian from NYU's Graduate School of Arts and Sciences in 1974. He's taught at several universities, but we're so happy that he, um, he taught at St. John's University uh, with the Italian Language and Literature Department for 31 years. I didn't realize it was that long, wow. Yeah. And now he's Professor Emeritus. Uh, you've written numerous uh, scholarly articles, uh, but you are very famous, I think, for this amazing trip to Sicily, which I hope you'll share a little bit about it at the end, because um, the McAllen Society has this wonderful Globetrotter program. COVID put a little um, nick into it. We started out a couple of years before the pandemic, and we traveled to Rome and to Portugal. Uh, we are now going to Paris in September. Otherwise, I would be with you oh, in right. Sicily. But hopefully next year, we can work collaboratively on, on a trip for our McAllen's uh, and go to Sicily with you because I think that would be wonderful. So now I'm going to turn it over and we're going to escape and take a nice trip to Sicily with Dr. Chipola. <laughs> How great <Wow>. is that? <laughs> it's all yours. I'm turning it over to you, doctor. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much, uh, Susan. Uh, uh, You're welcome. It's a, it's, a pleasure. it's a pleasure to see you again. I haven't seen you for uh, many years. Uh, I've been re I didn't realize how long ago I actually retired, but it was like <laughs> 2011. Uh, wow. But I've been very, very busy. In any case, uh, I thank you for inviting me, and uh, I thank you for Our pleasure. the opportunity to actually talk about uh, Arba Sicula and what we have been doing, and uh, also uh, show you some of the highlights of the tour. Uh, Wonderful. Of I recall, I don't know if you, if I recall that we did something like this uh, many years ago at a Sicilian restaurant. Yes. Do you recall? The yes, Sicilian very, restaurant oh, that was wonderful. In Queens, and we enjoyed some excellent uh, Sicilian food. Too bad uh, this presentation is online and we cannot enjoy <laughs> Another delicious dinner that would make you feel as though you just landed on the island. Um, <laughs> by the way, since the title of this uh, presentation is Sicily, the best kept secret, I will tell you that Sicilian food is one of those best kept secrets. <laughs> uh, I have led 26 tours of the island and we have never had a bad meal anywhere. Uh, all the different people uh, who have come and gone uh, in Sicily throughout its 3,000 years of history uh, uh, have left a bit of their culinary habits, their ways of preparing food, and their sophistication. Sicilians have a way of making even the poorest food taste great. Gaetano Basile, uh, a friend of mine, uh, says uh, that the culture of good eating and drinking was born in the Greek cities of Sicily. Wealthy Greeks and their wealthy Greeks sent 
uh, their cooks to Sicily to learn their art. Uh, if you were a wealthy Greek or a later, a little later, a wealthy Roman, the way to show your wealth was to have a Sicilian chef in the house. During the period when Sicily was part of uh, uh, Magna Grecia, which means the later uh, greater Greece, Sicilian cooks could be found in the richest families. The writers, Kratinus, said that you could know if a family had a Sicilian chef by the smells that came from his kitchen. He quipped, I'm quoting, either the people in this house uh, are merchants of incense or they have a Sicilian chef in the kitchen. Uh, I don't know if you know, but the first cookbook was written by a Sicilian. The name was Archestratus of Jela in the fourth century BC. And he was a, a gourmand, a man who actually uh, went all over the world, all over the known world, all over the Mediterranean to tell you uh, which country had the best food and the best products. Uh, but I'm not here to talk about uh, <laughs> Sicilian food. Even though I know That's that okay. culinary <laughs> habits uh, of the people who emigrate to other countries are the last uh, to disappear. Uh, they will forget or forsake their language, but not their eating habits. Uh, so Sicilian food has accompanied Sicilian everywhere they have gone, and that's practically everywhere. Whenever Sicilians go, wherever Sicilians go, they carry with them their history, even if they were not fortunate enough to go to school. The wisdom that has accumulated in their brains through their experiences. Basically, Sicilians, like all islanders, have a deep attachment to their island and experience a sense of loss when they are forced to go away. They try to cope by recreating another Sicily everywhere they go. They set up shops that carry their product. The pizzerias make spincione, which is the typical uh, pizza of Palermo. Uh, they make um, cannoli and cassata. Uh, their vegetable stores uh, sell eggplant and basil. Their women make tomato sauce uh, that lasts the whole winter. Uh, if they have a backyard, they usually have a fig tree uh, in the backyard. I have three of them. Uh, you all have seen little Italy's uh, in many American cities. Many of them are actually little Sicilies because Sicilians are everywhere. I can illustrate the story about this a little story with a personal thing before I begin. My cousin in Francavilla di Sicilia started a bus company uh, that traveled back and forth to, to Germany, um, bringing uh, immigrants who went to work to Germany and then they would come back to Sicily for their vacation. And whenever they went back, they would uh, carry because they would carry all kinds of suitcases with everything that they could not find in Germany. So they loaded up their suitcases with all kinds of things. Uh, tomato sauce, to tomatoes, whatever. Because my cousin did not charge for the weight uh, on the bus. Uh, and if they go by air, obviously they would be uh, hit with big fees. In any case, the company was called Sicilia Express, or uh, then he changed it to Cipolla Express. And they would go travel one full day from Sicily to Germany. And uh, one day, my cousin saw this little old lady who had uh, uh, two tremendous suitcases. And my cousin, who was a big man, was in, uh, unable to actually pick them up. It was so heavy. So he turned to her and he said in Sicilian, can, can anybody un understand Sicilian uh, uh, in the audience? Hope, I hope they can. That's it. I'll say it. He says, Signora, ma che ci misi? Madam, what did you put in these suitcases? Rocks? And the little lady apologetically said, no, no, they're not rocks. They're Sicilian soil. Sicilian soil. I said, why are you bringing Sicilian soil? 
and she explained, well, my son who lives in Germany married a German woman and they have a beautiful garden and they have a, a rose bush that is, um, looks great, but it does not smell at all. The roses in Germany do not smell. So I am bringing him some Sicilian soil to make the roses smell. That was a wonderful little story that, that he told me. Uh, she was bringing Sicilian soil to Germany to make the roses smell. She was trying to reconstruct Sicily in Germany. We at Arba Sicula, the organization of which I'm president and editor, have tried to provide an emotional link uh, to the Sicilian culture that Sicilians, Sicilian immigrants miss when they are forced to be away from the island. As you may know, there are numerous Sicilian communities in this country and around the world. Arba Sicula has members in every state of the union, even in Alaska and in Europe, and of course, in Sicily. We have nearly 1500 members, very loyal members, and many who have actually bought a life membership by paying $500 uh, one, in one shot. But once they become members, they almost never cancel their membership. Um, let me get this thing out. The only exception is when they are too old and they can't see anymore and then they cancel or when they pass away. Arba Sicula was founded in 1979 by Joseph Palisi and Gaetano Giacchi with the intent to study, preserve and promote the Sicilian language and the culture of Sicily. Their feelings was, were that Sicilians have been maligned for far too long in this country and it was time to fight against the stereotypes promoted by the media and provide a more correct image of Sicilians uh, and their contributions to Western civilization. As you know, Sicily is the largest island in the Mediterranean and it lies at the crossroads between Africa and the Middle East and, and Europe. Sicily was like a bridge between the various uh, peoples of the Mediterranean basin who were attracted by the beauty and fertility of the island from the Phoenicians to the Elimians, from the Greeks to the Romans, from the Byzantines to the Arabs, from Normans to the Germans, from the French to the Aragonese, from the Spaniards to the Piedmontese, from the Austrians to uh, uh, the Bourbons, from the British through the Piedmontese, and again, they were the last because Italy was formed in 1861 after Garibaldi invaded Sicily. 17 different groups have come and gone on Sicilian soil and left some of their best, and I must say some of their worst, on the soul and language of Sicilians. It would take too long to, to talk about the domina various dominations of Sicily, uh, but you can see, uh, you can see, for example, on the screen now that I can see the PowerPoint presentation, all the names that you see here, all of these names are all different people who have come to dominate or to become the rulers of Sicily. Some lasted a long time, some left a great imprint and many uh, simply waned into the air. Uh, I will probably say w which ones are the most important, but here. Now, Arba Sicula, before we go back and go to this, uh, produces a bilingual uh, journal, uh, Sicilian English. It's the only one in the world uh, which has everything translated into English, Sicilian on the left and English on the right. Uh, it, it contains poetry, narrative, essays on Sicilian culture, on art, architecture, history, traditions, and language. We also publish a, a newsletter, a 20 page magazine called Sicilia Parla twice a year. And we publish supplements occasionally. We hold two programs, or two, I'm sorry, we hold three cultural programs at St. John's University. And in connection with Legas, we have published about 150 titles. 
80% of which are on Sicilian subjects. And we run an annual tour of Sicily. On September 3rd, uh, we are going to leave for Palermo for the 27th time. We had to interrupt uh, our tour for the pandemic. So we had to cancel it for the last uh, three years, but we had one scheduled for June and we basically uh, uh, had to postpone it to September. And we have 37 people going on, on, on uh, limited it to 37 people. We could have had more, but we didn't want to overcrowd the thing. Our goal is to educate uh, our readers about Sicily, not only those who are not Sicilian, but the Sicilians themselves and their descendants. The Sicilians who came to this country in massive waves in the 1890s and the early 19th, 20th century uh, were people who were not well educated. Many of them were illiterate. Uh, they only they did not know Sicily themselves. Sometimes you know, uh, people actually were born in one town, stayed in one town, and died in the same town. So they didn't know what Sicily was. Uh, they, so they didn't know their history, the accomplishments of Sicilians, the importance of the island in the Mediterranean. And they had been indoctrinated to think that the Sicilian language was a corruption of Italian, an inferior form of communication that carried the stigma of illiteracy. Most people believed that if you could speak only Sicilian and not Italian, it meant that you never went to school. We all learned Italian in school. Our language was Sicilian. Uh, they do not know, for example, that Sicilian, the language, Sicilian language was the first language to emerge from Latin to become prestigious enough to uh, be used for poetry. Under the realm of uh, Frederick II, man who was known as Stupor Mundi, the astonishment of the world because he was so brilliant, uh, this, he founded uh, a Sicilian school of poetry, uh, which eventually created the language that became uh, kind of a koine and was used in Italy, not only by Sicilian, but people of different parts of, of, of Italy. Uh, and it was, it, they created actually the cultural, the canon of it, Italian literature that was later adopted by all Italians. Dante Alighieri, who is the father of the Italian language, uh, said, uh, I'm quoting him, whatever Italians produce in form of poetry for the first 150 years was written in Sicilian. And that's something that nobody can change. Ad Basicula has basically restored Sicilian to its proper place as a language that have produced many great poets and a vast literature written in Sicilian. Through our publications, our cultural programs, and our tours of Sicily, we have corrected many misconceptions, prejudices, and malicious stereotypes. Last month, after I gave a lecture at uh, Italian Charities, a member of Alba Sicula came up to me to tell me that all his life, and he was clearly a, a senior citizen, he had thought that Sicilian was only an oral language, something that you could not write. And he was amazed to see Alba Sicula, which is written in Sicilian. Um, I explained to him, I explained to him one, one curious thing, uh, which was basically that the, the priests in Sicily try to teach catechism to the Sicilians uh, by rote. In other words, they, were, they had a book written in Italian for themselves and written in Sicilian for the parishioners. So basically Sicilians learned by memorizing what the priest was asking him to repeat. They never saw Sicilian written. My mother passed away many years ago. Uh, whenever I gave her a copy of Arba Sicula would look at 
would try to read the Sicilian and she would fumble with it uh, until finally she knew what the word was. And then of course pronounced it perfectly because she was fluent and only spoke Sicilian. Well, she spoke some Italian, but mostly Sicilian. Sicilian was written uh, by not only by the poets of the Sicilian school, by all the different poets who write in Sicilian even today. And by the way, Sicilian was used as the language, as the language uh, to record the activities of the Sicilian Parliament. The Sicilian Parliament, you may, uh, I'm telling you, is the oldest Parliament in Europe. If you go to uh, to uh, Palermo uh, at the Palazzo dei Normanni, the Norman Palace, where this Parliament has its seat, there are two, basically two dates on top of the seat where the president uh, uh, holds court. 1131, 1947. 1131 was the date of the first parliament held in Sicily, which is earlier than British uh, parliament. 1947 was the time when uh, Sicily was given its uh, uh, semi-autonomous statute. It was signed before the new constitution of Republican Italy after the war, because as you know, Italy was a monarchy until uh, 1947. Um, I can go on for a long, long time. But anyway, I, in my desire to educate the public, basically I founded three, three series of books. Um, I mentioned the first two. One is called Poeti d'Arbasicula, Poets of Arbasicula, which has already published 17 volumes, all in bilingual form, because I believe that uh, poets are the best representatives of a country, the best ambassadors of a country. Uh, the second one is called uh, Sicilian Studies, and it talks about history, traditions, and things, and we have published 30 different volumes. So we have begun to erase uh, the stigma of speaking Sicilian. One of our members, uh, Joseph Belesti, created uh, the first Sicilian English dictionary. Another member, Kirk Bonner, wrote the first scholarly grammar of Sicilian, called well, Introduction to Sicilian. I myself have published two volumes, uh, two grammatical uh, treatises. Uh, one is called Learn Sicilian, um, Paramulu Siciliano, which, is, uh, which adopts uh, a communicative approach. And I'm, I am glad to tell you that the book has been a tremendous success. We are in the fourth printing of the book. Uh, the book is being used or was used at the University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia. Uh, as, a, as a class, it's used at the Italian charities. And I was encouraged actually to have uh, uh, the book translated into Italian by a professor uh, in Tunis. His name is Alfonso Campisi. And uh, you will be uh, interested to know that the uh, University of Université de la Manuba in Tunis is teaching Sicilian using my textbook. So there are Tunisians, Tunisians, still Tunisian students learning Sicilian my, from my book. Uh, I, the success of the first book uh, led me to actually do a second volume, which is called Learn Sicilian Two. And Learn Sicilian Two is written in Sicilian because it assumes, it presumes that you have studied already with uh, the first book and that you know a little bit of, uh, no, basically you know some Sicilian. So it's written in Sicilian for, for um, the second year of study of, of Sicilian. Uh, it also has been adopted by Italian charities and they are, do, they are using it as a textbook there. But in Sicily also my, book, my books are being used um, by individuals to teach uh, Sicilian. So in addition to all the other things that we have done, we have done, we have, uh, done hundreds of programs dealing with Sicilian culture at St. John's, at St. John's University and elsewhere. I am proud to say that all our programs are free to the public and their guests. 
And I like to say that Sicilian is the best buy in town because if you become a member by, by paying $30 a year, you can come to our events and we hold two, three, sometimes four events free and we provide food. So for $30 a year, you get dinner for 10 people <laughs> plus entertainment. Uh, I, um, I don't want to spend too much time on here because obviously we're going to run out of time with all the beautiful things that you can see from, uh, from the screen uh, now. Uh, but I'll just say that Arbasicula is the best buy in town. It only costs $30 a year. You can become a member. We have a web, wonderful website called arbasicula.org that contains, that has recently been done uh, and, and, and you should visit it because uh, you can also buy all the books that we have produced. So basically, I will uh, stop uh, with my first, my introduction, kind of a long introduction, perhaps uh, uh, taking away from the others, but it's imp important for us to know uh, what we are doing. Uh, I think uh, perhaps we can go back to, uh, go back to, to the first slide, uh, if you can do that, uh, or can't we? You're going forward. <laughs> Basically, what what the slides, uh, the, the slides simply, these are all pictures that I've taken myself during the tour of Sicily. Uh, as I said, we've done 26 tours. One year there was so, such a, I said, one year I said, listen, I, this, we're, we have done 20 tours. I'm going to stop when I'm on the 20th tour, I will stop doing it. Uh, that year we had to do two of them because people just did not want to miss uh, the tours. In any case, this is the first slide that just tells you a little bit about, about Sicily and uh, its history. All the, the history of Sicily is, is caps, encapsulated in the names that you see here. For example, if you look at Sicans, the Sicans or Sicani, these were the first people who came in recorded history, the first people who colonized Sicily. And that's the name Sicania that you can see there is one of the names of Sicily. The second group that came from uh, around, perhaps around the Lazio region, initially uh, were called Siculi, in English, Sicels. They are the ones who gave the name Sicilia. Uh, but that's not the only name that Sicily has. Sicily has been called the Island of the Sun by the Greeks. It was called Trinacria, when Trinacria means uh, the land with three corners. Um, it has different names, by, given different names by all the different people. And anyway, you can see all of these. Uh, these are the people who have come and gone who have had some interaction with Sicily, some more important than others. Obviously, the most important ones would be the Greek, the Greek people who came to Sicily uh, in the eighth century before Christ. In fact, the first colony they started was in near my hometown, which is Francavilla di Sicilia. If you go down to the shore, you will be in Giardini Naxos, Naxos, was added afterwards because we always know it, knew it as Giardini. Now it's called Giardini Naxos, and that was the first settlement of the Greeks uh, in Sicily in 735 BC. And from that point on, they created all kinds of colonies, Messina, Siracusa, Lentini, uh, Gela, and so on. And a hundred years later, the people from Jela went inland to, towards uh, Agrigento, they founded Agrigento. They never really went as far as Palermo at, at the beginning because Palermo was founded by the Phoenicians. In any case, we can go on uh, to the next slide. Uh, you can see the island of Sicily, it's, it's really, it's enormous, basically. It's, a, it's an enormous island uh, full of different things. Uh, just to give you an idea, if you are here, which is Catania, if you are here, there's a highway that goes, runs through the middle of, 
of the island to Palermo. It will take you two and a half hours by bus, two and a half hours. But if you travel everywhere uh, from one point to the other, it becomes more difficult because the highways are not, uh, they're not that many of them. They finally completed the one between Palermo and Messina, but it took them <laughs> over 25 years to complete. In any case, Sicily is a, called a triangular or trinacria uh, because of the three promontories at the end of, uh, at each end, in the corners, at the angles. One is called uh, Capo Peloro, which is near Messina, Capo Lilibeo, which is near Marsala, and Capo Passera, which is down here uh, near Ragusa. Uh, when the Arabs came, when the Arabs came in 827 BC, they started their land uh, invasion from here, uh, Mazzara del Vallo, this place here. By the way, we're not too far from Africa here. Uh, Tunis is just across 115 um, kilometers. Um, sometimes you can actually see Africa from Sicily. Anyway, they landed here and they divided the island into three places, three districts. And then they were, they comprised basically the, the Western half, Western third, which would be like, like here. Uh, it's called Val di Mazzara. Then the, this part here, which is called Val Demone, it includes Messina, Cala Catania, and all these towns in Mount Etna. And then the last one, it's called Val di Noto. Noto is a city down here that uh, was an important center. So those are the three districts of the Arabs. Um, when the Arabs came, basically they renamed practically everything in Sicily with an Arabic name. Uh, if you go to Sicily, you will see, for example, a word, a city named Calta. Calta Nissetta, Calta Girone, Calta Buturo, and so on and so forth. There may be about 12, 12 different cities that begin with the word Cal. It comes from the word, uh, Arab, Arabic word Halat. Halat means castle. So basically, Calta Nissetta, which is here. You see here, I don't know if you can see that, this big thing. Calta Nissetta uh, in Arabic was the city of beautiful women. In any case, you can see, uh, you can go on to, to, to the next uh, slide. This is the symbol of Sicily, it's the flag of Sicily. This, this image uh, that you see, the lady with, uh, with the three running legs, uh, has been interpreted as, a, I don't know, the passage of time because of the fact that it's running, it's revolving, it's running around, it's time running. Uh, it also could, was a symbol of the god Baal, and also uh, it was a heraldic symbol of the Spartans, because if you look at, at one leg, the Spartans, for example, used to have on their shields one leg turned like that, like the, the right one on, on the side, which st stood for the letter L, the letter L, which was Lacedaemony. It was the word for the Spartans. When the Spartans became, came to Sicily and became Sicilian, because Sicilians have always had an idea that they were a separate people. They had their own identity. In the fourth century, before, in the fourth century, one of the, uh, Hermocrates, Hermocrates said, we are neither Dorians, we are neither Ionians, we are Sicilian. Fourth century. So they, even though, People have come and gone. Sicilians have always maintained their, not their independence, they maintain their individual sense of being. We are neither, we are neither Dorians nor Ionians, we are Sicilians. And that's one, one, one misconception, uh, for example, that um, we have when we think of Sicily and you see uh, names of, uh, of Sicilians who are actually credited for being Greek, Archimedes. Archimedes is Sicilian. But if you ask, for example, somebody in a school 
uh, who have heard who has heard of Archimedes, they will say, oh, he's a Greek. He's a Sicilian Greek. He was born in Syracuse and died in Syracuse. So I wrote an article called um, Sicily and Greece, trying to show that basically uh, culture did not ride on one lane uh, towards Sicily from Greece. It was a two-way street. It culture traveled back to Sicily, to, uh, to Greece from Sicily as well. Gorgias of Lentini used to go to Athens to teach uh, the art of public speaking. So that basically uh, the two worlds mesh and interact. So it's not a one-way street. Not everything is Greek. Um, this is called Magna Grecia, which means literally the greater part of Greece. And we have, as you, as you can see, we still have remnants of the, of, of the Greeks. The temples that you find in Sicily are sometimes better kept than the temples that you find in, in Greece. All right, so that was, I'm sorry, that was uh, the, the symbol of, uh, of Sicily, which by the way, was adopted only in 1890, 89 I believe. Uh, but you saw also the face of the young girl with stalks of wheat coming out of his hair. That woman was supposed to be, was Medusa, Medusa, the woman who had snakes around her on her head and were able to petrify anybody who looked at her. This is a picture of Medusa, an old picture of Medusa, uh, which was at the center of, of the flag. But they, they put uh, stalks of wheat coming out of her hair because basically when the Romans came, they used Sicily as the place to grow their food. Sicily was the granary of Rome. It was the first province of Rome and it was basically uh, the place where they, they grew food for their armies. So this is what she looks like. You can go on to the next one. This is what you see inside the, uh, uh, the palace of the Normans, which was basically built by the Arabs. Uh, and which is the seat of parliament. This is the room of the viceroys, where you can see an image of the, uh, of the Medusa. And with the writing, na nobli tan, which actually means Palermo. Let's go on. Uh, the symbol of the, the, the Trinacria, the, the three running legs, you would be surprised, is also the symbol of the Isle of Man. It's on, on the one pound note of the Isle of Man, which is a little island of, of England. And surprising enough, this was a big surprise to me. It's also the symbol used by the Department of Transportation of the United States, as you can see here. The next one. Uh, this, uh, our tour, our tour begins in Palermo. We normally fly to Rome, then to Palermo, and we start in Palermo, we spend three days in Palermo uh, and then move out. So it's our first stop. And Palermo is the capital of Sicily. It, it has a very ancient history, has almost 3000 years of history, was founded by the Phoenicians. Uh, it was also the capital of uh, the empire under Frederick II. It was also uh, the seat of government uh, when the Arabs came. Uh, and it was basically a, a big, big city with lots of history. When the Arabs were there, uh, an Arabic uh, traveler said that the Arabs uh, in Palermo are very haughty people because they want almost they want uh, one mosque per person because there are 300 mosques in Palermo. Uh, so they, they, they couldn't do with a few. They wanted 300 of them. And it was basically the biggest city in Europe at one point. When, when Paris was a, a hamlet, Palermo had something like 300,000 people. Uh, it's also the seat of the Sicilian parliament. Next. Uh, in Palermo, we visit the city obviously, and uh, 
we are normally received by, not normally, occasionally received by the president of the region, sometimes by the mayor. I have personal relationship with most of the uh, authorities. Leo Luca Orlando, who is the mayor of Palermo for many years, who just uh, uh, stopped being mayor in June, uh, has received it many times. Uh, Nello Musumeci, who is the president of, of the region of Sicily, has invited us many times. We were there on the last tour. We were received in the uh, seat of, gov of the official seat called Palazzo d'Orléans, uh, where he has his offices. We were, we were, the whole group was received there. So we see city, the city of Palermo uh, during the day. We go to Monreale also uh, on the same day. And then the next day we go to Cefalu. So we spend three days, th three nights there, but we, we do all kinds of little interesting things. This is the Cathedral of Palermo. It was founded, it was started in 1184. Uh, by Ofamil, the uh, Bishop Ofamil, and basically it's still in construction. The different parts were made uh, at, at different times. The four towers were actually built in the 14th century. The portico, which is this part here, was built in the 15th and 16th century, and it was remodeled several times. Next. The back of it, you can see the Arabic and Norman architecture with all the design and the, all the wonderful uh, look, look uh, you can see it, all the design. Go ahead to the next one. This is the entrance to the church. Uh, basically the church uh, contains the tombs. It's almost like the Pantheon in Rome. It contains the tombs of uh, the most important rulers of Sicily. Next. And it's uh, basically uh, uh, dedicated to its uh, patron saint. It's called Santa Rosalia. By the way, in Sicily, there are three saints, three female saints that are beloved by the population. One is called Santa Rosalia, and they call them Santuzza, little saints. Uh, the little saint, Santa Rosalia, became the saint, the patron saint of uh, Palermo in 1624, because supposedly she stopped the plague that was being, that was ravaging the, the, the city. The, Palermo had four different saints before that as patron saints. So she actually replaced the other ones, and Palermo has a, a kind of an affection with uh, Santa Rosalia, and they hold a, a a festival that lasts, uh, uh, used to last five days in September. And uh, I can tell you one story that whenever uh, one of the viceroys, uh, there, there happened to be a, 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 an earthquake that, which nearly destroyed all of Messina. And the viceroy's idea was to actually save some money by cutting down on the, uh, on the celebration for the saints. Uh, instead of five days, maybe three or maybe four, one and the Palermitans were so uh, upset by the whole thing that they left a note on his on his uh, uh, next to his bed, uh, which said, "Hola festa, hola testa." Either the feast or your head. <laughs> uh, there's a sanctuary of uh, Santa Rosalia whose body. Uh, bones were found on Mount uh, Pellegrino, which is the uh, overlook, overlooks Palermo on the side of the mountain, and they, uh, the sanctuary there. They have a stair that goes all the way up to the mo mountain. The people are so, how would I say, so uh, loyal and so affectionate that they sometimes climb on foot, on their knees, this enormous uh, slope going up to the mountain. Next. This is, uh, you can see the donations. You can see all the money sitting over here. Uh, that donation contributed to actually making a golden dress for her. Next. This is an elaborate uh, uh, cart 
made for the saints. And, and they make different ones every year. But now the, the, the festival called Festino only lasts five days, three days. It's in September. And they go through the city with, with all kinds of pomp and ceremony. Next. This is another one. Another one that goes through the, there are two main streets in Palermo. One is called Cassero, Cassero, which means Casera, is a co corruption of the word Casera, which means, which is Arabic, and which means the way to the castle, which if you go from this way, if you go, if you go from here up, you will end up uh, by the Norman Palace. Uh, and the other one, the street that goes this way is called Makeda, and uh, this particular, you can see here, the facade of one of the buildings. This is called Quattro Canti, the four corners, which has four facades on each side of the, of, of the, of the uh, crossroads. They're all the same. Basically, you have, uh, re they reproduce, for example, uh, the kings of Spain, the seasons, and the protector, the patron saints of the city. Next. The, this is inside the cathedral, and inside the cathedral you have the tombs of three, of, of four actually, four of the major ones. This one here is called the tomb of Frederick II, who was the greatest uh, emperor uh, that Sicily has produced. This is Roger II, the Norman, who basically created the, the idea of a state. The first modern state in Europe was created by Ruggiero II, Roger II. Henry VI was a, a German and he married Costanza. Costanza was the, the last uh, heir of the Normans uh, in Sicily. She was basically 40 years old and uh, she gave birth to Frederick II. But uh, I should, <laughs> very strange thing because she, she gave birth in the open. They had a tent uh, where people could uh, see uh, her give birth to the heir because a woman who is 40 years old in those days uh, did not give birth. So she wanted to be sure that people saw that the heir she produced was the real, the real heir. So she did it in public, in public. Uh, and he became Frederick II. So he's here, Roger and, and Costanza Valtier. Next one. This is the, the Palace of the Normans. The Norman Palace, as you can see, is this old part. Uh, this is uh, Roger's room. Or, uh, I, you'll see an inside of this. You'll just see things inside of it. Go ahead. Next one. This is what it looks like inside. All these beautiful rooms. This is called uh, Roger, La Sala di Ruggero, Roger's room, all decorated with mosaics. Next. Uh, and you can see the wonderful design. These are all done by Arabic and uh, Sicilian uh, artisans. Next. The palace, the Norman palace contains a jewel that is almost uh, incredible. It's called the Palatine Chapel. As you can see, Palatine Chapel, it's all covered with golden mosaics. Um, I don't think we're going there this year because they, they raised the price to 18 euros per person. Uh, so we're probably not gonna go there, <laughs> but it is amazing. All the, all the holes, it's not that big, it's not that big, but we're going to see bigger things, bigger places of mosaic and Montreal. But this is a wonderful place, uh, all done by, uh, I don't know if you know anything about the art of mosaics, it's a little basic covered with uh, gold. Next. This is the altar place with uh, the image of uh, Christ uh, that, that is typical of the Norman era is called Christ the Pantocrator, which means Christ the Almighty. Next. Uh, 
we move down to uh, from uh, the, the Castello, the uh, political center of, of Palermo, which is this. This is the town hall, the municipal building, and this is a wonderful fountain called the Fountain of Shame, because because the women are all naked. So La Fontana la Vergogna, La Fontana della Vergogna. Next. You can see the images of, of the fountain, all of these statues uh, naked uh, for some reason. It wasn't built, it wasn't made for here. The, actually the fountain was made for a Florentine uh, rich person who eventually did, sold it to Palermo and they brought it down. Next. And you can see, they're wonderful. It was re restored uh, uh, a few years ago, but it's a wonderful. Fountain. Next. You will find many in Palermo, you will find many of these um, churches. This is an, a, a church, basically. It's a church of San Cataldo, uh, which has these red domes. And there are other places in Palermo like this. It reminds you of the Middle East, obviously. Uh, and next to it is another wonderful uh, church. Uh, that we visit because it contains uh, the image of Roger, who is being crying, crowned by Christ. Next. We move into the center of Palermo. This is a modern theater. It's called uh, um, Teatro Politeama. It's a, it's a wonderful place, but this is a wonderful square. Uh, by the way, when we go in Palermo, this year, we're going to be in a hotel right around here called um, Hotel Garibaldi. Next. Uh, so those of you who have seen the Godfather movie will recognize this. This is the Teatro Massimo. It's the, uh, the second largest opera house in uh, Italy, in the world, basically. Uh, and it was done by uh, Basile in a neoclassic, neoclassic style. If you remember uh, Godfather Three, by the way, Godfather Three, uh, the, one of the last scenes of the, the daughter of Don Corleone gets shot right here on the steps of, of, the, uh, uh, of the entrance of the, uh, of the theater. By the way, I don't know, I don't want to say it, but uh, for that movie, for that movie, I actually tutored Al Pacino in Sicilian. <laughs> uh, I must say I, I tutored him. Uh, we, we spent about seven hours together in the studio while he was trying to dub his, uh, his voiceovers um, to, to say a few things about uh, when he speaks Sicilian. And I was so upset that I wrote an article afterwards because I got to correct him uh, a few times, um, a few times, one of which was cut off. And then he speaks for in Sicilian for the last 15 minutes of the movie in Sicilian while he's sitting on a chair in Palermo and then drops dead. I don't know if you recall the thing, but he's speaking Sicilian. And he made such a mess of it that I am embarrassed. Uh, I'm embarrassed by it. So I wrote an article about about it, saying um, he was supposed to say to to uh, to a mafioso. He was supposed to say, uh, "Sit down," to a mafioso, and he keeps he kept saying to him, "Sassita," and I looked at him and said, "What is sassita? Uh, sit down." And I, I corrected him, and I thought he was one of my bad students. You know, you, as a teacher, sometimes you you know the student that's going to have a big problem the first day in class when they can't pronounce the word buongiorno. <laughs> I love I, it. I know, <laughs> I know. When I can tell, I can tell who's going to have problems. Right, I right. He was going to be a big, big problem because I had seen, I had seen, <laughs> I seen that's how a funny story. Poorly how poorly he did in the first Godmother, um, first movie. <laughs> so I corrected him and said, you can't say sasita. The word is sasitasi. 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 I was surprised because he said it 
almost perfectly, eh? <laughs> correctly. And then he was supposed to say the same thing to another mafia. So instead of actually telling him using the same words, I said, Sakumurasi, which is the same thing, make yourself mm. at home. Sakumurasi. And he said it correctly. When I saw the movie and I saw the disaster that he could, that he made in his, using Sicilian, I got so wouldn't say pissed. <laughs> I was so um, uh, peeved. I was so peeved <laughs> that I wrote an ar article uh, and published. I, I don't think he ever saw it. I don't think he ever saw it. Anyways, I have a picture <laughs> of him and me. Uh, really. Also, he held he held me after the the seven hours that we spent together. He put his arm around me and he said, "Ma frate, ma frate, my brother." Your brother. Because somehow, yeah. when when I was young and he was young, we do look a little look bit a lot alike. That mm. <laughs> is a claim to fame. I look like a, a Dustin Hoffman nowadays. But anyway, <laughs> you do actually. <laughs> <laughs> An and Italian anything. version. Uh, I don't, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm, that's a great we're, story. We're, we're barely going. I don't know how long we can go on. I know uh, we have like one minute left. One minute. Left. All right. Let me see. Good. Let's go to the next slide and then I'll stop. All okay. right. We'll, we'll stop with this one. That's this a good is one. Uh, uh, a beautiful, beautiful, wonderful piece of uh, the museum of. Uh, Abatelli Museum, the National Museum of Palermo, and it's uh, the announced woman, l'annunciata by Antonello di Messina, who was the painter that introduced this oil painting into Italy. He had spent some time in, uh, uh, in Flandre, in, in Holland, and he had learned how to paint with oil and this is a wonderful, wonderful uh, reproduction of the Annunciata with her hand holding up when she is being announced that she's going to have a child. And she said, like, wait a minute. Well, <laughs> her hand is just saying in doubt, wait a minute. But she has a wonderful look uh, of a Sicilian beauty. Uh, this is in the museum of uh, Abatelli's, Abatelli's museum, which is a wonderful place. Um, I am so. I, perhaps I talk too far too much. Perhaps we can do it. We can do it some other time. It was. It was so interesting. Thank you. And the photos are beautiful. It really felt like I was transported to Sicily, and I'm so <laughs> so jealous of everyone that's getting to go uh in another month or so it sounds like a wonderful you know trip. you know i i every time I, I go there i i think i am actually making ambassadors of sicily That's because nice. all they yes. do is talk about it for ages I, mm -hmm. I even today i i have people who write to me saying how wonderful they remember their tours um you are very years. famous you are because I'm every famous. Everybody yeah. I speak to, in fact, um, I met a wonderful uh, alumni couple that um, have now moved to Tennessee, and we were talking, and your name came up, and they said they went on several of your trips, and they wish they oh, could really? have gone on the one in September, the Salinitros. And, oh, Salinitros, yes, of course, and them. they were raving about you, but I, there's always, when I'm with a group of alumni, your name always comes up. Your trips always come up. Uh, so you're you're still very famous, and and what's well, wonderful is you're keeping our heritage alive, because I'm I'm concerned. That's one of the questions I wanted to ask you. Uh, we see so many. If you just look at it from a culinary perspective, you see many Italian restaurants closing up, uh, and you know as the generations go on, uh, I see that it's getting watered down a bit. Um, you know, maybe not speaking Italian, and how much do the younger generation really know about their culture if they're Italian? Yeah. And as an Italian, you know, American, that concerns me because you don't want yeah. to see the the culinary, the arts, the culture, everything that uh, Italians bring and offer to the world. You don't want to see that go away or be forgotten. 
um, you're certainly helping it, but do you have any other solutions? Like, do you know of the Italian societies? What are they doing to, you know, uh, you know, capture the, the minds and the attention of our younger gener generation of Italians? It is basically very sad that, that, um, that the younger generations are turned away from, uh, from there. I think it has probably something to do with, with the, the initial attitude that we, that Sicilians had when they came to this country to become American. Mm -hmm. which meant uh, to forget everything about yourself and just start a whole new life. Right. That was the wrong thing to do. Mm -hmm. to do. I agree. That now, uh, and many people who talk to me will say, uh, that was a mistake. My parents forbid, did not allow me to, to learn uh, Sicilian, and now they all regret it. Because right. basically, uh, in the end, you are who you are. And exactly. you can't erase those things. Uh, so and true. you might as well embrace them, embrace it and be who you are, because basically that, that's what I'm doing. I, you know, we all go through a, pro, uh, a moment of, uh, of, of doubts uh, as to who you are and what you are when you come to this country. Uh, you, you are a split person. You are, not, you are no longer an Italian and no longer, and certainly not an, an American. Uh, people who talk to me know, just by the way I talk, that I'm not American. <laughs> mm. I speak with a, I don't speak, I speak English. In fact, I, when I first came to this country, I spoke English. I didn't know a word of English, basically, but I learned English. Uh, by watching movies and I went to school at night. Uh, the first night I arrived at the airport, that night I went to register for a high school, uh, high school for, for an English class at New Utrecht High School. <laughs> uh, and I learned English by studying, by watching movies on TV. And believe it or not, for the first two years, I spoke with a British accent from Brooklyn. <laughs> wow, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's very uh, funny. So basically, at one point, you have to decide who you are and what you what you will be. I mean, uh, you can't deny certain things, but many people actually do deny them. They change their names. They change their names to uh, to become American, and then they realize that what does that mean? What, what does that mean? I mean, you're American, so. Do you feel, American. but do you feel like Ancestry.com now that everybody, it seems like it's become popular. People want to know where they originated. Although I would right. think for Sicilians, it might be difficult because I don't know. Well, I can tell you that Sicilians, uh, 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 the people who have, um, have not given up on their identities. In fact, basically, Sicilians are the only ones who, when I, whenever I meet anyone who is Sicilian, the first thing they tell me is, I am so proud of being Sicilian. Who asked you? <laughs> I didn't, I never ask. I never ask them, yet they volunteer that they are proud of being Sicilian. And I keep asking myself, why do they tell me that? And I know the answer. The answer is what people say about Sicilian is not true. What people, all the, the garbage that is being said about Sicilian being mafia men, you have a knife in your pocket, um, all, all nonsense. Uh, one time the New York Times said, wrote an article uh, about Sicilian. Um, Make living out of the mafia. He said 10% uh, of the Sicilian population lives on the mafia. 10%. Oh, wow. Wow. That means that if you're sitting in, 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 in a place where there's 50 people, right. one tenth of, the, one tenth of that, that would be mafiosi. Uh, garbage. That's crazy. So, uh, mm. so uh, 
we have been fighting this all along. I mean, we basically don't go around. I never talk about the mafia. Uh, I never talk about the mafia. Obviously, it exists. Obviously, it it is a, a stigma on, on our, but it's it's a very small part. It's a very right. small, minuscule part of what who we are. Sicilians are good people. Uh, they work uh, hard. They they they've had their share of uh, of heartache, uh, and they deserve to be better known. So basically, Albasicula has restored no. Arbasicula has given the members of the organization a reason to be proud. In other words, they know why they're, they're right. proud, but because of what we have uh, uh, given them, what we have, uh, the books that we have produced, the fact that Sicilian is not a dialect, uh, but it is a language itself. We are, we are for example, doing right now um, a translator, uh, you know, Google Google has uh, hundreds of translators of different yes. languages. Right. Would you say that a, a country that has 15 million, 15 million speakers should have its own tra a translator? It doesn't. Oh. Wow. It doesn't. Really? Corsica. Wow. Corsica. Corsica, they have a translator for Corsican. Uh, really? Corsica is a small island. Yeah, it's very fact, small. Basically, basically, but Corsican is also so similar to Sicilian that basically sometimes I, I you know, I have to do a, a lot of translations, uh, basically from for the magazine. Sometimes if I if I put Sicilian, it interprets it as Corsican, mm -hmm. and it does a good job of translating into English. The other way around, it also works. However. I have, I have to do a lot of changing afterwards, but wow. we are we have created through my work and the work of a, a young man who is uh, uh, working with me. Uh, his name is Eric Eric Doviak. Uh, we have created a translator for Sicilian, the first one Very nice. in the world. Wow! So that's wonderful. it does. It's not exactly perfect, but then none of them are. Right. Because uh, they've right. tried <laughs> Google uh, Google Translator that makes a lot of mistakes, but it's 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 uh, it, it requires a little bit of a human uh, human effort to, to correct. Doctor Topola, they were asking because um, I was trying to find it. Is there a main website for the organization? Yes, because they were asking. I don't know. I oh, googled yeah. it for some reason. It wasn't coming up. Do you have? Can you put that in the chat? Articula. Arba Sicula, one word. Dot org? Dot org. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's what I thought it could be. But one I, word. It didn't Arba, come up. A R B A S I C U L A uh, dot org. And in fact, we just did, when we did uh, the, the website uh, through, through the help of some of our friends, uh, and it, it, it contains a lot more information. In fact, I actually uh, put created three different lessons, beginning lessons of Sicilian for people who want to learn Sicilian. Oh, very three nice. of them, yeah. Uh, that mimic the procedure in the, in the, in the book. But they are PowerPoint presentation, interactive with voice uh, that you can actually learn a little bit of Sicilian. And I propose to do, to do each lesson, more lessons occasionally. I've done three. I will do more and then and, and create an online kind of uh, book to learn Sicilian. Uh, so the, the website exists. Uh, you can also become a member through the website. You can pay for it through uh, PayPal. Uh, you can also buy the books. We have the catalog of our books, which contains 150 books on Sicily, uh, on Sicilian things, especially the grammar, uh, which is my latest uh, effort. So, well, we'll send yes. all that information of Sue Bernadine when we do our follow up. Uh, she'll include the link and send that information out to everybody. It only who costs thirty dollars a year. I told you, uh, it's the best yes. buy in town. And we include the recording. Year and you will receive Arbasicula, which That's is wonderful. a one one uh, one volume, double volume, 
two issues of Sicilia Parza and uh, publications, whatever, um, occasional publications that we do as ec supplements. That's wonderful. This, um, we're also, we will uh, send the link to the recording that, that's housed on the Office of Gift Planning YouTube page. Uh, and also, I just see, you just, there's so much information. I hope you will come back. Um, I think we should do a series and we could do maybe a two part or a three part if you have time, <laughs> because you have so many slides and so much information. This was wonderful, especially it would be great to hear um, Maybe if we have another power hour in October, um, it would be great to get some of the people that traveled on your trip and to have them share their experiences with all of us on what they thought of Sicily and, and the people oh, yeah. and well, the culture. It, it would be nice they to would have be them. happy. They would be happy to, to, to do it. I did that would be great. one, one uh, unsolicited uh, letter from... Uh, uh, a writer who came on the tour, uh, his name is Anthony D'Alessandro, uh, that I published in Sicilia Parza because basically we, we, we do, the, you know, I don't do much, we don't do publicity. People come on the tour because they've, of other people who have come on the tour. So we don't publicize it because it's not a tour, a commercial tour. First of all, yes. the price of it is is uh, very reasonable. Oh, it's extremely. Very reasonable. It's only thirty six hundred dollars includes That's everything. It's incredible. Uh, even even lunches and, and the airfare uh, and everything. A similar and commercial tours cannot do what we do. Commercial tours are not invited to Villa Nishemi, which is the the place where in Palermo the mayor receives guests. They're not mm -hmm. invited to a cocktail party. At, at, at the thing just for us. And we've done that. Uh, sometimes I don't do too much with the authorities because I don't want to become, you know, uh, I don't want, I want, uh, and basically mm. uh, we try to keep them uh, limited. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> limited. No, we, we, I don't know of any other tour that can have access to the president of Sicily just for uh -huh. a tour. That's great. Uh, so, uh, well, we'll uh, have to talk more because we really would like um, the Globetrotters to. Uh, well, I, uh, yeah, by all means. That well, would be great. We only went through what? The first uh, five slides or 10 slides? I know. I, this is I great. So, we need a series. You have to, you definitely have to come back. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Thank you so much. And I hope. You enjoyed it based on some of the responses. Everyone said that they really loved hearing your presentation and all your stories. I know there was one quick question, but I think you answered it about the dialects that Sicil dialect, yes. Sicily, is not a dialect, it's a language and you're promoting language. that language. So, and I think By if they means. go on your website, they'll be able to see it. Um, is Dr. Chipola's tour different from Yumi and Sicily, which is shown on the Arba Sicula website? Oh, yes. It is yes, uh, those okay. are friends of mine. Friends oh, okay. of mine, and I, they are on. This, by the way, I introduced them. Uh, they're done by Alfred Zappala and Esther. Uh, Esther, uh, his friend, uh, Alfred Zappala is an interesting character. He was a lawyer. He's a, a lawyer from Massachusetts who decided to go back to Sicily to live there. Uh, he's an American. Oh. Loved Sicily and loved his grandfather, and he oh. uh, lives in Sicily together with Esther, and they are producing these uh, these things. He's also uh, I oh, wrote very nice. three. I published three of his books, uh, oh. three of his books, and one of his. And they've interviewed me for the uh, presentation. You be in Sicily, which is a documentary. Uh, they've interviewed me two or three times. And I'm hoping to see them in September uh, to continue uh, another That's interview. Uh, wonderful thing was they go and travel all over Sicily with beautiful pictures, and and she they have become quite knowledgeable about the Sicilian Sicilian culture. Um, but it all started when he lived in uh, in Massachusetts, and then he decided to first go back and forth, and now he's 
He's there all the time. So we have That's it wonderful. on our website, at least one. But uh, okay. uh, on YouTube, you can find them all over the place. We also have other things on you on you on our website. Uh, poetry of Alessio Patti, who's a wonderful performer, poet, uh, uh, a man who, who does all kinds of things. But he is a translator into classical Sicilian. So he has translated Shakespeare into Sicilian. Wow. He has translated uh, uh, classical Greek plays, uh, tragedies into Sicilian, and he's he's a volcano of creativity. Uh, wow, that sounds wonderful. So, so he's also there. But we, so our website is going to try to bring in all of these uh, different people who are working to to make Sicilian. Uh, respected uh, and to cut away the stigma that speaking Sicilian always carries. Because as I said before, if you only can speak Sicilian, that means you never went to school. And, mm. and most of the people who came to this country, unfortunately, did not have much schooling. They were illiterate, not all of them, but I mean, there were many of them who were uh, farmers, uh, workers who try to f find find a place to live uh, that was better than than what they had. Mm. They're all over. Yes. Oh, yes. That's for sure. Well, thank you again for your time, and thank you, everyone. Uh, once again, our McCallum Society Power Hours. I'm Susan Damiani, Director of Gift Planning. Shu Bernadine, Associate Director of Gift Planning. We offer these Power Hours every month. Next month, we'll be exploring um, land art, uh, which is uh, going to be uh, presented by our director of the Yay Gallery, Art Gallery here at St. John's University, uh, Dr. Owen Duffy. And he's been on many of our Power Hours. It's very interesting. So I think you'll enjoy that, that talk as well. Uh, also, don't forget July 28th, Thursday evening, is our summer concert on the Great Lawn. And if you're a McCown Society member, or even a Lachlan Society member, you've probably already received our invitation from 5.30 to 7 o'clock. We have a wonderful barbecue before the concert. So I hope uh, many of you will join us. But we will definitely have to have you back again, Dr. Chipola. So thank you so much. Yeah, Safe you know, travels. Always, you know, uh, in October, uh, let's see, we're doing a program in October 1st. Uh, we have a group of uh, Sicilian singers coming to... Uh, uh, New York to perform for us at, at the Italian charities and on Queens oh, Boulevard. Nice. Oh, okay. Uh, on Queens Boulevard because we couldn't get at St. John's, we could not get a, a room space uh, really until September. Wow. Uh, and obviously, these people have to travel and have to make mm. plans much before. So we, I decided to this time go to Italian charities, but uh, we hope to resume a program at St. John's in person. So, Wonderful. We'd love that. Hmm, yes. Hopefully, hopefully. Yes, that would be oh, wonderful. So let me know when uh, when you want uh, me to continue. Oh, I will definitely. We'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you so much. Have Thank a wonderful you all. day. Ciao. Bye. Have a good day. Have a good day.